Hey guys, Paul Danner here, AKA Scanner Danner. Um, my students gave me that name years ago. My name is not Dan, it is Paul. Anyway, uh, today we're working on a 2011 Honda CRV uh, with an air conditioning problem. I have no idea what's going on with it. The only thing I've done so far is start it up inside, turn the AC on. I didn't hear an RPM change. I didn't hear the compressor engage. So the first thing we're gonna do is connect up some gauges, see what we have. Special thanks to cameraman Caleb, who is here with us today. All right, in light of my uh, brake video I did on my truck, and I got all kind of grief for not having my safety glasses on, and I was wrong. Um, I should have them here for doing air conditioning work. I don't have my safety glasses, but I'll put my sunglasses on, at least if I have a refrigerant line that would rupture or whatever. I got some kind of eye protection on. We should have eye protection. I didn't stress that enough in my last one. Right now I'm just connecting the gauges. Our low and our high side um, uh, adapters are right here. They're actually marked on this one. This is our low, this is our high. So our first check for an air conditioning system would be to check what's known as our rest pressure, meaning the compressor is not running and that's what I'm doing first. So making sure all of my lines are tight, valves are closed. That's good. It's completely empty. So all, I, all I've done so far is I've connected my low side gauge. Get a shot real quick right here, Caleb. And this didn't change at all. Um, what we should have with an R134A system is we should have roughly the same pressure as temperature is outside. So um, there's a pressure temperature relationship with every refrigerant and R12 and R134A are very close to our degree Fahrenheit scale. So today is about 70 degrees out and what we should have is 70 PSI of rest pressure. Now at this point, there's really no reason to connect my high side gauge. My system's empty. A lot of people would wanna see that too, but it's not necessary. I'll do it for you guys. There is no, let's be clear about this, with an air conditioning system, when it's not running, there is no low and no high side of a system. There is one pressure in the whole system. At rest, that is. I think I said that right. At rest, in case I didn't, at rest with the compressor not running and the system sitting, once pressure has equalized, when you shut the car off, your low side pressure is the same as your high side pressure. So just one gauge connected showing me no pressure in the system, this thing is empty. So what we're going to do next is we're gonna air charge it and we're going to check for leaks just using soap and water. I've shown you guys this method before in my Jeep repair videos. I'll put some links in the description of this video that will direct you to those other air conditioning repair videos I've done. I do not have nitrogen. I agree with you guys that nitrogen would be ideal. We're using compressed air. And again, for you guys that maybe didn't see that series, my argument with using compressed air is what do you think is in this system right now? It's completely empty of pressure. There is atmospheric air in this system. I'm using compressed air. I'm not gonna cause any more damage than what's already here. The desiccant in the receiver dryer, it's already saturated. So we've just relocated closer to the garage so we could get some air. And um, what I'm going to do is go right into the center port of my gauge set, fill this thing up with air. As far as how much air pressure, most shop air compressors are around 150 PSI. It's perfectly fine with that number. Some of you may be concerned, given that the low side operating pressures of an AC system run about 30 PSI with the compressor running. So maybe you're thinking, well, you're putting 150 PSI in a system that should have 30 on the low. What about the low side? Um, what you have to remember is when you shut the car off, and pressure equalizes, maybe it's a real hot day, you have 300 PSI on the high side, 30 on the low, where do you think that pressure's going? It's bleeding back into the low side. Or take a, a day where you, you've been driving the car, you shut the car off, close the, you know, the hood is shut, under hood temperature is maybe 150 degrees, 
So your rest pressure, your rest pressure alone is going to be about 150 PSI in that scenario. So feel free to put as much air pressure in it as you want. Um, well, maybe not, but 150 PSI I'm fine with. And that's what I'm gonna do. Um, a couple of things that we wanna do with this air. First one, of course, is to find the leak. And the second one, if it holds at all, we're gonna run this car for about five seconds with the compressor compressing compressed air to make sure that it can do its job. And then that will also answer all of our electrical concerns. In other words, I put air in this system, turn the clutch on and it does engage. That tells me that the inputs on this system are good, the outputs, the computer, relay, wiring, clutch, all of that. And that is certainly something you'd wanna know up front before you would sell any type of major AC repair. Imagine if this, say, needs an EVAP core and you have to rip the entire dash apart and when you're done and you fix that leak, you find out you have an electrical problem to the compressor clutch. It's not a good way to approach it. We need to know this now. That's why we're using this method. So over here, Caleb, just going with my air nozzle here. You don't have to be necessarily zoomed way in here, Caleb. You can back up a little bit. Yeah, the gauge, not, not the gauge pressures aren't really critical, but I'm opening my low side gauge and I'm putting air in it right now. You can watch the high side gauge increasing. And we're just, I'm gonna give it whatever the shop has if I can. I just screwed up with my air nozzle here. So there's 125. That's 150. All right, and then I shut the valve. So right now, we're looking at 150 pounds of pressure in the system. Both of these nozzles are closed. Do I hear anything? I do not. Another thing we can do is we can watch this gauge for a second, either one, but this one's buried. So right now, we'll watch the high side gauge. And let me get my hands off of it so there's no movement. Let's just watch that for a second. All right, so what, what this looks like right now is this has a leak, of course, because it was empty. Refrigerant doesn't just disappear. We have a leak, no question about it, but it's not a big leak and we can at least do the rest of our checks right now. So next up, before I start going over this system with just some simple soap and water, um, I want to start the car and turn the AC on. We're gonna watch our gauges and then uh, see what our compression pressures or our pressures do, which would indicate our compression um, pressures of the compressor. Compression pressures of the compressor. It will indicate whether or not this compressor can do its job. How's that? That probably sounds a little better. Hang on, let me get one more body. All right, Timmy's gonna be our Timmy's gonna be our compressor guy. Just about like five seconds max with that AC button on, okay? All right, go ahead and start that, Timmy. Watch the gauges. Wanna see this. So, good. It was like 325 and 25. Nothing wrong with the compressor, nothing wrong with the wiring. Computer, again, inputs, outputs, relay, clutch, everything is good. All we need to do with this particular AC job, we need to find the leak. That's what that test does. Air charging a system gives us that ability. Now, I would agree with you guys, nitrogen would be ideal. Um, I don't have nitrogen and I've been doing it this way for 20 years, never had an issue. Of course, we will evac the system very well when we're done, take the moisture out of it. Thanks, Timmy, that's all I need you for, brother. So now what we need to do is we need to find this leak and unfortunately being outside in a parking lot uh, is not ideal, um, but uh, I really wanna take this cover off and focus on the condenser and focus on the uh, compressor itself. Um, what I've, what I've uh, noticed about R134A systems over the years, um, is they're a lot more difficult to locate an area of a leak. See, I started in the field in 1993 full time, and there were still plenty of R12 systems out, and R12 uses a mineral oil, and um, when there's a leak, there would be evidence of oil 
on R12 systems. And what I found over the years with R134A is the oil they're using, either PAG or ester oil, apparently is water soluble. One of you guys can correct me on that. I may be wrong in my terminology, but here's the thing. We never saw oil leaks like we did in the R12 systems. That's my experience with the R134A. So visual inspection is a little bit more difficult is what I'm getting at. I'm gonna pull this top cover off, these little clips, and then see if we can do, uh, at least get down to the um, condenser a little bit better for the camera. This needs to be a scanner danner pocket screwdriver. Some merchandise. I'll add it to my list of things to do. Scanner danner poster. <laughs> poster, that'd be kind of creepy. Just doing a visual on the condenser here, and you can come over here, Caleb, and the condenser would be, so this is our, our rad right here, or our, our rate, wait, I'm trying to think. People make fun of me the way I say uh, radiator, rad, but everybody else says radiator. Here's your radiator, <laughs> AKA your radiator here in Pittsburgh, uh, or your rad. So this is the rad, and right here in the front's our condenser. And so the first thing I wanna do is I want to do a visual uh, uh, on the condenser, especially along the fins. And I'm gonna spray it. Whoops. You can just kind of stay zoomed out for a second here, Caleb, and I'm, I'm gonna spray this down and we'll see if we can't. Actually, you should be following me wherever I'm spraying. If you can, like zoom in right here, over here on from this side, this angle down. You want to be. Uh, that looks all right. Yeah. So I'm just spraying the corner of the condenser over here, and then come over here on this side. I'm going to do the other part, and then we'll hit it from this side. I'm just looking for bubbles. And then I got to find the lines where they come in. Right here is one of the connections we want to worry about at the condenser, and. And it's fine, I don't see any any bubbles at all there. All right, the next line is this one right here on the bottom. As you can see, no bubbles coming out of that either. So it doesn't look like it's the condenser, moving on. So knowing you're plumbing your AC system is important too. And so we'd have a line that would come from the compressor, would go to the condenser. And then from the condenser, it would go to the EVAP inside the car. And that would be Let's do those one at a time so you guys don't get lost. All right, All right guys, this, these camera shots are tough for where we are, but where this, um, let's see if I get my laser pointer on, on the camera. So this line right here, that is known um, as your, what's it, that's your discharge line, okay? And that is discharging a high pressure vapor from the compressor. The compressor is sitting right there. In fact, that's an area I wanna spray Right there next is the back of that compressor. And I'm gonna look for bubbles there. Cause that would be a highly suspect area for a leak is the suction discharge lines on the back of the compressor. I don't see anything. The next thing is gonna be the line itself, any part of the rubber line. nothing there and I am just about out of soap which is stupid I didn't bring any more with me Caleb that was dumb all right another area this is my suction line it's a rubber connection again connection here rubber here spraying all of this no leak showing anywhere and then back in here Caleb Right back here, let me get my light. We're gonna revisit all of these places I'm spraying here in a minute. So this connection where it goes into the firewall, that is my EVAP core that sits inside of there. There are really two places that the soap and water has a difficult time locating and, and that it would be uh, the compressor shaft seal in the front and then the EVAP core itself are the two places that Soap and water is not gonna really help me. Um, 
why don't you just kind of hang back for a second Caleb and let me uh, try to locate this and then we'll try then we'll get the camera on it Looks like dye. Here, come over here. This is the um, discharge line. It looked like there was some green oil on that connection, but I don't see bubbles there. Over the years, guys, uh, in a case like this where, you know, we have a leak. Check out, look at my gauges. I was gonna say, we have a, a very small leak, but, but this isn't very small. I mean, we've lost a pretty good bit of pressure already. We were just, below 150 we lost over 25 psi we should be able to find this this is a pretty significant leak let me just eyeball all my connections again kind of stinks we're outside where we got wind and i can't really hear very well that and I'm getting old, I can't hear anyway. Too much metal over the years. Where is this leak? I'll spray the front of the compressor down. I'll try to get you guys in here. I, I'm, I'm just about out of... Uh, my soap and water and I left the rest of it at home, which was dumb. So stupid. I'm gonna spray the front of this compressor. One of you guys are probably yelling at the screen right now saying, oh, it's the evap core, it's the compressor, they go bad all the time. You might be right. I don't know this system. I'm just going off of standard procedures is what I'm teaching here. Not a Google search on what's a common failure. Now I can do that too, and maybe I will to guide me, but these initial steps, everyone needs to know how to do it. You need to know how to put uh, air in the system or nitrogen if you wanna use that. Check the compressor. Know your system, know your components, important stuff. Then maybe we can do a Google search on what a common failure area is for a leak that would really help a lot if we were up in the air now and I had this bottom cover off and I could look at the bottom of this compressor and it's really something that we may have to do because I can't check the evap core um, over here Caleb um, you can stay zoomed out but there's an area right here See this um, hose that's coming out right here? That is known as your EVAP drain tube. And that would be where the moisture comes from the inside of the car when you're running it. That's an area we can use a leak detector and um, you know, basically you're sniffing for a leak, but you need to have refrigerant in the system to do that. And so we can't really do that test. I need to get underneath this, man. I need to check this compressor better and I can't really do it here. What did I do with my lame ass pocket screwdriver? Someone was in here, we're missing some clips. One missing here, one missing here. Try not to break these clips. So far so good, I have not broken one. All right, two more on the other side. That's good enough for me to get access. Is there evidence of a leak? Here, get a shot here, Caleb. Lay down on the... Actually, let me spray it first.
Like I said, unfortunately, I see no evidence of leaks, no oil traces, and this, the compressor shaft seal, the soap and water method is not really useful for it. I really need to do a sniff test and I can't. Here, you can get a shot of Oh, I guess you were, huh? Yeah, I do have a shot of that. I watched the spirit. Okay. Bottom of this comp condenser up here. And then the other side, back up, up here. You know, as bad of a leak as this is, we would we should be able to see it. So, really, what I need to do now, I need to evac this system. I need to put some refrigerant in it, and uh, we need to do the last two checks, which is the compressor shaft seal and then the evap core. The drain tube um, again now would be the time to do a google search and find out what a common failure is on these like i said one of you guys are probably yelling at me right now saying what it is because you've done a ton of them but we're down now even lower we're down to uh you know maybe Let's see, each one of these lines, it would be 25, 10, 5, 10, 15, 20. So each one of these lines is 5 PSI, it looks like. So we're down to 115 PSI now from almost 150. Pretty, pretty significant leak. You know, it is possible, it's possible that there's some residual refrigerant in here even though that it showed zero that maybe I pick up something I'm gonna grab my my leak detector and I haven't used I haven't used this thing in a long time I bought this from a Matco guy back in the day I'm hoping it still works. It doesn't sound good. Remember false positives being a thing with this too, but our drain, see, this is almost not worth doing because there is no refrigerant in here, but at least I can show the process. Here, come down here again, Caleb. So refrigerant will always be uh, sensed the best underneath. But that's what you'd want to do with refrigerant in there is you go underneath the compressor, not above it, but underneath the lines. Right? That's what we want to do, but again, we need refrigerant back up top here's see where my hand is oh, yeah. that's the that's the drain tube discharge right there so what you'd want to do is you put your tool right in the drain tube and of course we need refrigerant right but that would be the last two checks we need to do and unfortunately I am my hands are tied here man um, Pete does not have, I don't know if I want to mention that. He doesn't have a recovery machine. We can't do this easily. All right, so here's the plan. We're gonna take all the air out of this system. And we're gonna um, connect it to my little hand, uh, not hand vacuum pump, my vacuum pump that I purchased for doing some home repairs. 
And the reason that we want to do this, guys, is um, we want to get all the moisture out of the system. And moisture and air conditioning do not get along. So what I'm going to do off camera, we're going to evac this. Then we're going to put um, a little bit of refrigerant in the system and we'll see if we can locate it that way. All right, so pretty simple little, little tool. Up here, Caleb, pulling this into a vacuum. And what we want, this, this gauge is open and uh, you don't have to open both. It doesn't matter. Remember that both sides are really connected when the car is not running. Um, but you can open both if you want. And to be clear, when you open these valves, you are opening, so let's say blue one's shut right now. If I open the blue, what that does is that's connecting the blue to the yellow. And when I open the red, it's connecting the yellow to the red. If you have them both open, you're really exposing both sides to this yellow hose. The reason I said you don't need them both open is if I'm pulling from the low side, I'm also pulling from the high side. You can see this needle's pegged, right? And there really doesn't read a negative pressure on this one, but then we use the low side for that. To each his own. Um, ideally, we wanna pull this down as low as possible. 29 inches of vacuum, 30 inches of vacuum. What that does is that lowers the boiling point of water. I believe water with and I could be wrong on my numbers here, so forgive me, but water will boil at zero degrees Fahrenheit with a vacuum pulled on it of 30 inches. So what we're doing right now with this vacuum pump is we're boiling all of the moisture water accumulated in this AC system out of there. That's the whole purpose of pulling it into a vacuum. So another leak check that we can do, guys, and I just, um, I just turned the valve off in the center or th this valve is off, this valve is off. So even though we have vacuum pulling here, we're not exposing it to the system. Um, what you can do is you can watch your, your low side gauge for movement or loss of vacuum. And, and I wanna warn you guys that you can actually have a system that um, changes as far as vacuum and pressure where maybe one, it may hold a vacuum, but it won't hold a pressure or vice versa so it's just another way that you can do a leak check we know we were losing pressure very I don't want to say very rapidly but it was pretty significant something else I forgot to mention to you guys as we're waiting for this gauge to maybe move is I never checked my Schrader valves so it's another area for a leak that we should um, consider. If you can't find a leak anywhere, you need to also check the Schrader valve connections. Now, for us, we had a loss of pressure of you know, 30, 40 PSI just in the time we were doing our checks. And um, obviously my gauge is connected, so it's not gonna be the Schrader valve. This isn't really changing. Let me be clear again as we're pulling a vacuum on this. Um, and that's kind of annoying, isn't it? Maybe I should not have that. I mean, I'm sure it's picking up your voice better. So. I hope so. All right, so just to be clear, guys, there's also another, another area for leaks, and that's the valves themselves. And I called these Schrader valves, but your service ports. All right, we could have a leak here that um, you're covering up by connecting your gauges. Another thing would be your gauges themselves and making sure that they're not leaking. And that's something that maybe I need to recheck. I mean, we know the system lost its refrigerant, but I guess what I'm questioning right now is that 150 PSI of air and the loss of it, was that because of my gauges? Because I never really checked them because and the reason I'm questioning that is how well this is holding vacuum right now. Which means it's a very small leak and not significant like I thought. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm changing direction. Before we put refrigerant in this, I'm going back with air again. And I want to recheck and make sure that my gauges themselves were not an issue. And I still have a little bit of soap left, so 
we're gonna do that. We're gonna re-air attack it one more time. Drop this a little bit. Get me right at 115 over here, Caleb. We're gonna put this gauge right at 115 right now, okay? Make sure that those are closed. Close all of these. And spray the gauges down. These are new gauges, but that doesn't mean we didn't have an issue there. Now one of the things I did in between is I also maybe didn't have these tight enough. Now it looks like we're already dropping. Now I'll, I'll double check my service ports here in a minute, but I wanna watch my gauge. It looks to me like that, that low pressure gauge has already dropped from where we, from where we started. So it's holding vacuum but it's dropping pressure. And to me, I think that really speaks to the compressor shaft seal being the issue. Because you know, an EVAP uh, core that's leaking, um, it, I don't really think that pressure and vacuum would, would alter that leak, because it's a metallic metal hole in a component, uh, as opposed to a shaft seal that's um, exposed to varying uh, pressures, one being a vacuum, the other being a pressure. We're absolutely leaking. So again, I want to emphasize, we, if you can't find a leak anywhere, we, we have one, my gauges are connected. If you can't find a leak anywhere, you don't want to forget about your service ports. And it's as simple as taking these off with your pressure still in there and then putting a little bit of soap and water in there. And we'll do that in a second. I just wanna make sure you guys are clear that we are absolutely leaking. I started at 115 in the matter of, you know, two minutes of me talking, we've already dropped about four PSI. On this gauge, um, what is each line is two, I believe. Two, four, six, eight, 10. Yeah, each line is two PSI. So we've dropped four PSI in the few minutes that I've been talking. Clearly, we have a leak. It is not my gauges. Because I mean, that's one thing that you gotta trust your equipment. It's not the gauges. And again, it held vacuum, so that's suggesting not the gauges too. All right, so the last thing um, before we pull this under a vacuum and do our um, refrigerant check is pop the line off, go in the service port, make sure you're not bubbling up there, All right? And those bubbles are just from me putting some soap and water in there. So that's good. And then this one too. Cool. So those are not leaking. And then of course, I don't want that soap and water going in there. So just blow those out when you're done. We don't want that We don't want that moisture going in the system. Don't forget about your service ports. I really feel like when we drain this out, we put some refrigerant in it, we're gonna find that leak right away at that compressor. Just based on the fact that pressure's dropping pretty quickly and uh, vacuum was holding, so get the air pressure out pull this under a vacuum all right we're gonna let that run for for a few and then we're gonna do the leak check one more time using vacuum just to show you guys that all right so what you guys missed again uh off camera we let that run for, for about a half an hour um pulled all the moisture out of the system it actually held vacuum surprisingly and I had Pete uh, put a little bit of refrigerant in this for me. We didn't put a lot in, maybe uh, maybe 12 ounces, 10 ounces of refrigerant. You look, take a look at our pressures right now. See low side's about 20, high side is uh, just over 100. So clearly low on refrigerant. 
outside temperatures. Again, it's not real hot today, but this is gonna be enough for us now that I should be able to use my leak detector. And uh, so let's go to the compressor shaft seal and then the EVAP drain and see what we get. These tests are gonna be done with uh, just, just using rest pressure, guys. And if you watch this, when we talk about rest pressure, we have a high side pressure that's dropping and you have a low side pressure that's increasing. And what I wanna do is let this sit, let these pressures equalize, because I really want my low side to be higher and it'll help me um, in identifying any leaks on the low side with my low side pressures being higher. Um, so just kind of we'll wait for a couple of minutes, let these pressures equalize, and then we'll start doing our leak checks. So I have to trust my equipment. This is an old piece of equipment. And you know, I don't like to vent refrigerant to the atmosphere, but I need to know that my tool is working. And so what I'm gonna do is just go around um, this low side port and I'm just gonna crack this for a second. Cool. So I can at least trust my leak detector. Now we're gonna go underneath and hit that compressor shaft seal. Okay, let's try the drain tube. There's a variable here and that is with this low a pressure, we still can have a compressor shaft seal issue. I'm only sitting about 60 or 70 PSI rest pressure. So from the top again, Caleb, I'm gonna go down to the drain tube. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's it, man. I am shocked, Caleb. I'm shocked. So the tip's in the atmosphere, right below the drain tube. I mean, I'm not even putting it in it. Our problem? We'll do it multiple times, just to be sure. <laughs> I, I am absolutely, I'm absolutely shocked. That contradicts, doesn't it, what I said about the compressor shaft seal. The fact that it would hold vacuum and would, would uh, bleed pressure, uh, to me, that convinced me that this was the compressor shaft seal. And what I just proved to you guys is it is not. This was the EVAP core that's leaking. Um, gotta have a electronic leak detector. Um, again, I, some of you guys are buying tools and I don't know if I can even find this tool for you guys. I'll try. I bought this off of the Matco guy. I'm telling you, it's gotta, it's gotta be 20 years I've had this tool. Um, so that's the, the brand. I don't know that, that you'll even be able to locate this. Um, it is for R134A, R12 and R1 and R22. Um, uh, I can TIF instruments, T I F instruments. I'll see if I can locate this on Amazon and link it for you guys. Uh, and the only reason I would, I would say that, uh, um, if you have a tool that's lasted you 20 years, here, here's another way to look at this. This thing sat in my toolbox in my garage, probably unused for 10 of those years um, with old batteries left inside that were le leaked out. <laughs> I took the batteries out, scraped all the crap off, put new batteries in it and it still works. So, I mean, that's gotta be some props for that tool. Um, anyway, need a leak detector for sure. So the last part of this guys, listen, I I'm not, I'm not doing the repair. The repair is the entire dash has to come apart. And uh, big job, right? So this is, this is a primary example of, of the test procedures I showed in this video, why you want to adopt some of them. And, and you can alter it on your own. If you want to use nitrogen again, that's great. Compressed air, I'm fine with. But think about this job. Imagine if we sold this job, we find the leak, right? We sold the job, did the EVAP core, um, only to find out when you're done that maybe, here would be a worst case scenario, maybe the engine computer driver for the compressor clutch is faulty. And it ends up needing a new engine computer to make the clutch circuit relay and everything turn back on again. Imagine selling that to the customer after you've just sold them $1,000 worth of repairs, maybe even more 
to repair the EVAP leak only to come back to them when you're finished and say you need an engine computer or you need a compressor or you name it. So air check these things, turn the compressor on. Yes, the compressor will be running with no lubricant. These compressors are lubricated by the refrigerant itself. So the refrigerant goes through the system, picks up the oil, lubricates the compressor. So when we're air checking these and we're running the compressor, what you need to understand is that compressor is running dry. You can damage a compressor doing that. But we're not going to damage it in the five seconds or so that we had the compressor running. I've done it thousands of times. Okay, um, and what that check does again is it confirms everything. It confirms your low side, high side pressure sensors and temp sensors and uh, clutch and relay and wiring, computer uh, switches internal, all of that. If the compressor turns on when you put air in it, electrically you're good. And now I'm confident to sell this job to the customer. What gets sold? Receiver dryer. Remember this thing was open to the atmosphere. Uh, one second, let me familiarize myself with what kind of system this is. Okay, yeah, my dryer is over there. In fact, we forgot to spray the dryer, which is in... Nope, where is it located? I don't even see the dryer. Okay, I'm a little unfamiliar with this system, I apologize, but one thing that I will say for sure is when we... Uh, uh, when Pete does the EVAP core, he also needs to sell the, the desiccant. Wherever the desiccant is, <coughs> whether it's in a receiver dryer or accumulator dryer, I'm not 100% sure. I believe that this is a TXV system, thermal expansion valve system, meaning it uh, has a receiver dryer. I just don't see it. Anyway, not important. Needs to be changed. EVAP core, dryer, wherever the desk can is, needs to be changed, and then it'll be good to go. We know electrically this thing works like it's supposed to. Uh, so one more time, let me take you underneath, and just to confirm again where this leak is, and then we'll end this thing. Cool. EVAP core, 100%, no question about it. That drain tube, I know, uh, come over my right shoulder here, Caleb. The drain tube, it comes out, comes out there and then it wraps around and goes over there and that's the tube. That tube where we were is, is connected. It's this piece right here. So that is the drain tube. And uh, I guess the only other thing I could say about doing that particular check, you do not want to um, have the air conditioning running when you do the drain tube check. What I have found with this, with these leak detectors, at least mine, is any airflow at all, watch. So even my breath, if there is airflow, can make this tool go off. And what I found in the past when I used to do leak checks is I'd have the air conditioning running, have the blower running, and um, getting false positives from the drain tube. So make sure everything is off. And that's why I kept rechecking it. Find a leak, it goes off, pull it into fresh air, go back to it. Make sure you don't bump it too. And that's another one that I've been misled by when you're, you're doing checks and you, you bump the tool. Of course, it doesn't do it now, but I've had it too where bumping the tool can give you false positives as, as well. So again, soap and water is great. Uh, we can check the whole system. The two main places you cannot check, EVAP core, compressor shaft seal. Then don't forget about your service ports. Make sure that those are okay. Check your gauges, make sure those are okay. We're gonna call this a wrap. I'm gonna have Pete evac this with his machine and uh, do the repair. We're done. Thanks for joining me, guys. Don't forget to check out my website, scannerdanner.com. And don't forget to read the description of this video where I'll post links for some other related AC repair videos that I've done. And then of course, my Scanner Danner Premium channel, which is where I invite you into my classroom at Rosedale Tech, and I can teach you to be a drivability diagnostic technician. So thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time.